So it turns out two species we thought were extinct actually live. Titanoboas are around and Tasmanian tigers are just posing for photos, so that's pretty cool. Okay, okay, before you crucify me for clickbait, this is Diamond, I'm Adam, stick around or whatever we do. I know that Titanoboa has been extinct for a long, long time, okay? But this week, there was a new species discovered, or at least speciated, that was a huge, huge deal. And I do truly believe that Tasmanian tigers are still around. We'll get to that in just a second. As an intro, Titanoboa was the biggest species of snake to ever live on Earth. This is a species that is actually relatively newly discovered. We didn't even know there was a snake like this until the early 2000s. In fact, it was in Colombia, I believe, in 2002. Some coal miners found amazing vertebrae that what looked like of a snake, but they're freaking huge, way too big to be any snake that is now alive. Now, of course, anacondas are still alive in Colombia. Anacondas are thought to be the largest of all the snakes by body mass. Reticulated pythons get longer, but they weigh less. Anacondas are the heaviest bodied snakes that are still alive in the world. So they knew it was something else. So there was an expedition from right after that finding to 2004, where they found 30 individual specimens, or at least parts of 30 individual specimens. Jaws, vertebrae, that's kind of what is around after a snake decomposes. And they determined that this animal might have grown up to 47 feet, 47 feet. Now there's unconfirmed sightings of snakes that are huge now, but generally, I mean, a 29 foot snake is kind of unheard of, 30 feet, something like that. Imagine a 47 foot snake that likely is just like anacondas gonna be found in the depths of rivers, streams, and things like that. Because of their jaw function or shape, we think that they were mostly pescatarian, I guess. I don't know. They were mostly eating fish. So this is a huge animal that's eating fish 47 feet long and up to 2,500 pounds, which is way bigger than any snake we've ever found alive. Now, Titanoboa lived 66 to 56 million years ago around then. So no, we didn't find a true Titanoboa. I know, I don't mean to clickbait you, but what we did find is the closest living thing likely on Earth. That is a new anaconda species. And before you say, oh, well, we find new species that get speciated all the time. No, no, no. This is a huge difference. This is not the anacondas that we know and love. The Southern anaconda, very big difference. So anyway, they're in these parts of Ecuador, going down these river systems, and the locals there are saying, yeah, we see these huge anacondas all the time. And then the, the film crew starts to see them too. So they have an expedition by researchers to come and look like, hey, are there actually anacondas that are 25 feet long, just all over the place, really, really big, bigger than what we think is normal? And what they find is tons and tons of these giant anacondas in these river systems in these remote parts of Ecuador. And to simplify it, in South America, there is two basins, basically. Again, this is very simplified, okay? So Northern, Southern, there's a whole mountain range, the whole thing. The Southern anacondas are the ones that we know and love. Green anacondas is what we're talking about, by the way. I should specify that because there are yellow anacondas and all anacondas are boas, but not all boas are anacondas. So this is a short, I think it was a 10 day expedition and they found a female that was 21 feet long. Now, of course, we know that anacondas can get bigger than this, but you usually don't see them that big. Green anacondas usually aren't over 20 feet. Obviously, they're really big and we've seen them, but to go on a 10 day expedition and just find a ton of these huge females is just unheard of. Usually, this is something that is something to write home about. And here they are for 10 days, just finding tons of these things. So what's the big deal? They found big anacondas in a place where that's not really where they're from. The big deal is, these are very different genetically. So for example, to set this up, humans and chimpanzees, this is a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees don't speak like we do. They can't act like we do. They don't live in cars. They don't have Apple Vision Pros. These are animals who live in the jungles. They are 2% genetically different than humans. We are so similar. 98 to 99% of our genome is the same as chimpanzees. So think about that. One to 2% difference between us and chimpanzees. The difference genetically between northern anacondas and southern anacondas 
is 5.5%, over double the genetic difference between humans to chimpanzees. Now, of course, I'm making a big deal about this, and if you know anything about genetics, like double isn't double, but at the same time, these are animals that split away from each other 10 million years ago. So this is not the same thing where, oh, well, uh, Western hognose snakes are now Plains hognose snakes and Mexican, like this is something that's very, very different. That's why it's so exciting. These are bigger, different looking. We don't know if the reproduction is exactly the same, the habitat, the diet. We need to do more work because until recently we thought they were kind of the same thing. Now, obviously this is a simplified version of it. I really hope that someone way smarter than me does a video about this. I hope Clint comes up with a video or someone like that. But either way, it's really exciting. I wanted to share that with you and then not reptile related. But my favorite animal to ever exist ever in the history of Everdom is the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger, which went extinct in the 1930s in a zoo in Australia. It didn't actually, I don't think so anyway. There's been sightings all over Australia and in my opinion, more than likely in Papua New Guinea which is also part of their range. And part of the reason I think that is because we've literally found other canids that we thought were extinct recently that are not extinct in Papua. So anyway, as this photo surfaced in Northern Australia, to me, this doesn't look like a dog. It doesn't look like a dingo. This is a thylacine. So in my opinion, they're still out there. And I think this is the best picture we have as of recent. And I know you guys probably seen it because it made its round on social media. But as my explanation of why I think that thylacine are likely still out there, I'm just gonna take an excerpt from, if you guys didn't know, I have another channel, mostly about history, called Informal History. I'd love it if you hit subscribe. But anyway, this is the excerpt from number one of the top five animals that are probably still alive, not extinct, even though they're thought to be extinct. Anyway, go ahead, Matt, you can roll it. Papua is a place that has never been explored mostly. There have been people who have been to Papua, but this is a place where you find those tribes that have never seen other humans before that are shooting things, arrows, and throwing spears at drones because they've never seen technology like that before. That's this place. This is a place that is so mountainous and unbelievably difficult to scale and navigate. Most of it has never been explored. In fact, there's been animals, mammals, that we found on Papua that we thought were extinct for a long time and we found them again. Big animals, similar size to the thylacine. So do I think that the thylacine still has an active range in Papua? Yes, probably very small, but it definitely is possible. And if not, well, there's de-extinction efforts, which is really, really cool. Welcome back and thank you for watching. I hope that you uh, did enjoy that. The point is, this was a big week for animals. Obviously, new animals and animals that likely are probably not extinct, I'm actually hoping for and uh, Diamond's just absolutely being wild. Either way, do you like videos like this where it's not a top five or care guide or whatever? Let me know in the comment section below. Please do, I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Really helps the channel and the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. You guys get so much and it's only a dollar a month. So for, uh, that's it, right? Because Thursdays and, and Mondays, Mondays and Thursdays, I'll see you in the next one.